Hello everyone, welcome to the last episode of the Fabrication Parts Training. My name is Ignacio and today we are going to see some advanced settings and tools to keep boosting your efficiency. The first thing we are going to learn is how to create a new profile in your database. Now, imagine that you have one regular client who usually works with the same materials and manufacturers. Since this is a really big client, he works in different states, which have different codes. And because of this, some specifications are slightly different, for example, the installation thickness or the hanger spacing. It wouldn't make much sense to duplicate the database since all the services and materials would be the same, but you can use the same database either because the installations wouldn't be right. This is the perfect scenario to switch between different profiles, saving lots of space on your hard disk. To create a new profile, we have to follow these steps. We go to Kademy P and with the database open, we right click on the main interface and go to Kademy P, Profiles, Setup. We then click on the New Profile button, name it and check the boxes as shown. We select Copy Database only to avoid creating a larger file with unnecessary fittings. And on the other hand, we select the Share the same item files box to have all materials and manufacturers linked to the global database. With these options, we will create a new profile that will use all the items from the original one sharing the same database. We can also check the selected services box to select and copy any service from the global profile of your database into the new profile. Keep in mind that all the profiles will share the same templates since they all use the same database, so be careful when editing an element or making any significant changes. Then, you can easily switch between the profiles and load it each one at the corresponding Revit model. Now, this same super client has some custom made fittings and you can find them in the manufacturer's browser. The first thing you must know is that all elements in fab parts have a property named CID. This property tells us the mother template of the fitting, also named pattern. For example, the CID for an IT elbow is 2523. On all 19 elbows we have this same number, no matter its manufacturer or its material. To see the element CID, go to the parts pool, right click on the element and go to properties. There, go to the general tab. Now that we know the CID, we can create a new fitting. For that, we go to the CAD interface and type the code make path. Then, we type the CID number of the element we want to create. Of course, we must first search it as we just seen. Now, we have to give all dimensions according to submittals or as requested by your client. Once done, if you wish, you can create a folder for this new fitting, for example, with the manufacturer and materials name, and accept. Keep in mind that if Academy P does not allow you to finish creating the element for any reason at all, maybe it can fill all the information on all the tabs. If you don't know how to fill a tab, open an existing element, see what it has and copy it on your new element just so that the software allows you to create it. Anyways, all we care about are the connectors and its sizes. Now, following the same example, this big client does not use PVC, but instead uses CPVC, which is slightly different material than the one that we can find at the manufacturer's browser. So, we'll need to adjust the sizes of the fittings. To edit an existing element, the first thing you have to create is a copy of the element. We do this to have the original file safe from any possible errors that we may create and we will use the copy for the addition. For that, we go to the parse pool, right click on the element and go to edit. There, we go to the path on which the element is saved and we create a copy. Once we have a copy, this is what we do next. We have to create a new folder in the database, stating that it contains edited elements, edited elements and we're going to save all the edited elements from that system there. For example, if we are editing PVC elements, we will create the PVC edit folder. We also have to state that the part was edited by changing its name, for example, quarter bend edited. To see these new elements and folders on Academy P, we first go to the CAD interface and type the command folders. Then we search for the same path on which we created our edited folders and elements, for example, under Public Health Systems. We right click and select New Folder and browse for the edited folder path. Once we are done, we have to restart Academy P to be able to see the changes. After all these steps, we can start editing the elements by right clicking on it at the parse pool and selecting Edit. To give a closer to the fab part training, I'm giving you this very useful trick. Sometimes we have connection issues between the elements when using fab parts in Revit. 
and we get warnings and pop-ups and we are not able to connect the elements because they don't have the same connector type in the database. Disclaimer, always make sure that you actually can connect these two elements by checking with the submittals or with the client. This trick is to be used only when the software does not allow us to make connections just because for how the database was made. Here is how we can fix this issue. We have to go to the parse pool and right click on the element of which you need to edit this connector and click edit. Go to the Others tab to find the Elements connector. Now you can click on the Deployable connector tab and select a logical connector for that fitting, but that would edit the element itself and we may end up creating more issues than the one we are trying to fix, so we are not going to change the connector here. What we are going to do is to add an extra acceptable connector to this fitting, so that its software will allow us to connect it with other fittings that have another connection type. For that, we click on the arrow that is on the left of the connector's name, and an interface will pop up. up. This will show us all the connectors available in the database. We right-click on the connector and choose Matching Connector. Now, we choose the connector that we need. This new connector will be a replacement for the original one. This will happen when the original one is not found, and the software will allow this replacement to take its place, and force the connection between the element. Keep in mind also that you can only pick one replacement for the connector and that this trick only works in Academy P2020 or the latest version. Well, that was the Fabrication Database training. If you found it useful, give a thumbs up and subscribe for more BIM tips and tricks videos. Bye bye!